Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, uh, we're going to build and deploy a Tech Jobs Recommender web app. We're going to deploy it on Streamlit Cloud. And I'm going to show you guys how. Okay. First, um, download this data set before you do anything. And then uh, before we jump in, we're going to do a cozying similarity uh, recommender system. So it's content based, based on the description, right? So the job description, and then we'll get into the code and I'll explain more about that. And it's going to return the job titles. And let's jump into the code. You guys can use a Jupyter Notebook or a Google Colab like me, or another text editor if you want. Because so import it with pandas, import these libraries, read it with error bad lines equals false, so it skips over bad lines, engine python, df info, look at the columns in the data frame, drop in a, and there's the description. You guys can see the job description, the head, so it's those five lines, okay. The TDI of vectorizer, this is how it gets similarities in words we can do in machine learning. We're going to import this, the job description, fill in A, and we're going to transform the job description. You guys can use other variables if you want. If you guys know what you're doing, or just copy me. The sigmoid kernel, we can do linear kernel or sigmoid. However, we're going to do sigmoid kernel for this data set. We're going to... The cozying similarity between these two. A DF index, drop duplicates. And we're going to get into this now. Um, get recommendations, right? The cozying similarity equals cozying. The title, cozying sim. Lambda x, always do reverse equals true. If you do reverse equals false, it won't give accurate predictions. The sim scores are sorted, right? The sim scores from here. We're going to enumerate them with the list in Python. And you guys can use other uh, variables if you want. And we're going to return the job title, ILOC, from the indices. And we're going to create a data frame. Because remember, GitHub, which we're going to be using, and you're going to need a GitHub in order to do this. GitHub has a has a limit of 25 megabytes that you can only upload. So we're going to shorten the data frames since we only need these two columns anyways, job title and job description. Okay. You guys can save the model as you want, Cozy and Sim, or whatever you named it, and then uh, save it as a pickle if you guys want to deploy it another way if you guys know how to do that. But we're not going to do that, but that's just if you guys need to save the model. Okay, we're going to dump job list, those two, that columns. And then we're going to basically copy everything we did for the code on GitHub. Okay, guys. Job list, commit it. The data frame we, we built. There's our recommend app. You can guys can name it whatever you want. There's the requirements texts. You guys see? Import these. Your setup sh. You guys don't need this. However, it's good to have it if you guys do want to deploy it on other platforms. You they might require this file. Copy this right here. However, you don't need it for this, but it's good. If you guys can just copy this and save it as an SH file, well, then you guys can use this on other platforms. Your pickle of similarity, if you guys want to commit it and you guys know how to implement it. However, you don't need to. Okay, so you guys remember basically the code. We're going to import Streamlit for the web app part. Remember, Streamlit is a front-end library that data scientists and machine learning engineers use to build web apps without needing templates like such as, or a front-end framework such as JavaScript 
basically you're just building a simple web app for data science. You're not customizing, you're not using all these JavaScript frameworks, you know, like JS React or uh, Angular, the old one. They've got newer ones than JS React, but because we're not front end web developers, we're not full stack web developers, we're data scientists, and machine learning engineers, right? Why well, we need to learn how to do their job unless we want. Well, that's why we got Streamlit. Okay, so import all of these, read that data frame, drop in a, transform the job description, remember? Fit the job description, the shape, if you guys want. You guys can get rid of that if you want. And then basically we're gonna put that right here, return with the def function in Python, just like in the code right there. That was just a walkthrough. And then we're gonna return, remember I didn't explain that part in the code? But this is how many you guys want. Like if you guys wanted to return more, change that right there. And remember I and I and SIM scores, IOLC, return, job title. Okay, this is your header. This is to open the job list. And then this is to open similarity. If you guys wanted to get rid of this and do it another way, I got you guys started. However, you guys don't need that. You guys need this, the job list, remember? So tune list, you guys can save it another variable if you want. Movies, movies, remember? Load the job list, values of the job title. Select tune, this is your select box. We're gonna get to that in a second. You guys are gonna be amazed, actually. And if show recommendations, then get recommendations, subtune, subheader, or in tune names, remember, is the get recommendations function in Python. So this right here is implemented over here. You guys see? Def get recommendations. Okay, guys. Anyways, now time for the fun part, right? Sign up for your Streamlit account. Sign up for your Streamlit account, right? When you guys do that, connect it to your GitHub. And then here you go. Watch this. Watch how easy this is. Okay, tech jobs. I already got one deployed. And then it even does it for you. Okay, and then deploy. Okay, guys, this could take a little while. If you guys want, you guys can see it's taking care of the requirements text. You guys remember that requirements text file? You see it's installing the packages. So if you guys go off on your own and you guys have another library like TensorFlow, Keras, remember you got to change that in the requirements text. You guys have any other libraries from the code, you guys got usually got to put it in that requirements text so it's all right. And you guys got to be careful with versions. You know, this version is outdated with this on this platform. So it's a little try and error if you're on AWS or other ones. Okay. So here we go, guys. Let's make our first prediction. And then uh, here's a... Uh... Okay, hold on. We could just go down. Okay. Here's this one. Okay, you guys see it made accurate predictions. You guys see based on cozy and similarity of the job descriptions. Now, like I was gonna talk about, you guys remember that selected tune, the select box. This right here, this little uh, string for the markdown, you guys can have it say whatever it wants. Same as this, this header as well. And then the button show recommendations. And subheader. Okay. And then always remember that lambda function. Uh, 
Okay. So most of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. You guys see these are pretty accurate predictions. Okay. Let's think of uh Okay, this is more of a leadership position, so it was recommending leadership roles. And then you guys see right here, you guys can scroll down. It goes down. So as you can see, these job descriptions, if you're in the industry, you can tell these are all pretty close. And you guys can change how many you wanted to rec recommend with that parameter like I told you. You see that right here? change it and if you guys have any errors with the code you guys can commit it and then it'll automatically implement the new code with the CIDC service you guys remember the CICD service okay so when we do a new app we can't do the same one this is a CICD service it's built in so it's a lot easier you don't need to build complex pipelines YAML files none of that we don't need to get into DevOps or MLOps really, except for updating the model. That's the thing. You guys remember if you get if this is used in production heavily, or the model goes stale, you can actually have model drift pretty quickly. That's why it needs to be uh, retrained on new data. Remember MLOps. Then with uh, web apps, it crosses over into DevOps as well. Anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed my video. Stay tuned and uh, be sure to, if you're watching this channel for the first time, be sure to subscribe to Project Pro. We got all kinds of stuff here. Project Pro, the only solution for solved industrial grade projects.